Hi everyone, thanks so much for being here. My name is Kat and I make houseplant videos here on Good and Planty. If you just so happen to absolutely love this video, please consider liking it, commenting, subscribing, or follow me on Instagram. All of these things help me grow my channel like a plant. So hello and welcome to part two of my two-part soil mixture series that I am doing this week. If you missed part one, I will have it linked up above and down below. And that is where I talk about building a houseplant soil mixture from scratch. So you're buying every individual ingredient. That is my new way of making soil mixtures and what I consider to be an upgraded way. But today I'm going to be talking about how I have made my soil mixture basically since I've started owning houseplants. This way is just amending store-bought soil and that can come from big box stores or garden centers wherever you kind of buy your pre-mixed potting soil. While this is no longer my preferred way of making house plant soil. There is definitely a place for it and it is not a bad way of providing soil for your houseplants. In fact, I find this method to be perfect for beginners or for those people who maybe don't have the storage space or resources to buy every single individual ingredient. Or honestly, if you just don't want to deal with making your own soil from scratch, this is also a perfectly fine way to do so. Real quick, I'm going to kind of breeze through some houseplant soil basics. I also talked about this in part one, but I want anyone who is watching these videos to have that foundation. If you watch part one, you might want to skip this little bit, but essentially houseplant soil, what I've come to realize is made up of three primary components. The first is the base substrate, and that is commonly either coco coir or sphagnum peat moss. This element is really important for water retention because obviously when you go to water your house plant, you want some of that water to stay in the soil so that your plants have something to drink. The second component are amendments for aeration, and these are components like perlite, pumice, charcoal, orchid bark, all that good stuff that kind of adds some airflow to the soil so that too much moisture isn't staying in the pot and that your roots kind of have some access to oxygen. <laughs> Without these ingredients, your soil will definitely be too dense and you might be prone to some issues like root rot and fungus nuts. And the last component is nutrients. So obviously nutrients are important for your plants so that they can grow happy and healthy and big. These are components that supply nutrients to your plants that are not very heavy fertilizers. So that'll look like compost or worm castings or sometimes slow release fertilizer, but I don't really like buying soil mixes with that because it kind of makes fertilizing yourself a little bit harder. So now that you kind of have the basics as to what we're working with today, let's go ahead and amend some soil. The pros of this method is that it is cheaper, usually. It is easier to make and to store, and all around it is just like a little bit more easy to understand. It is definitely a more accessible option. The cons of this method are that you definitely have less control in the ingredients and the sourcing of those ingredients with this method because you're using a lot of pre-mixed things. So I would just be mindful of that if you are someone that's really particular about the ingredients you're using. And also because you have less control over those ingredients, you know, you might be compromising a little bit on quality and therefore your plants might be a little bit less happy. But with all that being said, I really do think that this is a very valuable and I don't know, okay way to make your soil. I've done it for a really long time. So let's start with the first ingredient, which is gonna be that store-bought soil. Here with me today, I have the black gold all-purpose potting mix. I've talked about this mix a lot before and I really do stand by it. I think that if you're gonna splurge on any of these ingredients, this is definitely the one to do that with because this is gonna make up about 60% of your mix. So it is really 
literally the foundation of what you are making. These mixes absolutely vary in quality, so I would say that black gold is a little bit of a better mix, but I have definitely used miracle Grow soil mixes and stuff like that. So it can vary and honestly just get what you think is best for you and also your plants. And I can afford it, I do buy black gold, which is what I have here, obviously. <laughs> when you are buying your potting mix, just kind of be a little bit mindful of what is in that mix. For example, a lot of these are sphagnum peat moss based mixes and which is fine but if you're someone that is thinking about switching to cocoa coir like i am just be mindful of that that it is kind of a little bit harder to find cocoa coir based mixes i will have a video out about cocoa coir versus sphagnum peat moss coming out later so make sure you subscribe if you don't want to miss that video but anyway moving on the next thing i would look at is to see what kind of fertilizer or nutrients they are using this mix uses worm castings, so I know it's a pretty gentle fertilizer and I don't see any of those slow release little balls in here. So I can kind of assume I'm good to go to fertilize myself almost immediately after potting up my plants in this. It also means that I don't really have to add too many extra nutrients in the mix directly. So you'll see in part one, I add worm castings into my mix, but I don't have to do that here because it's already in this potting mix. A lot of these mixes will also contain just a little bit of perlite or orchid bark or a couple other amendments. That is already gonna add a little bit of aeration to your mix but odds are you're probably gonna have to add a little bit more than is being sold to you because you'll find that no potting mix is really suitable for houseplants right off the shelf. Hence the fact that we are amending it today. <laughs> so just to kind of recap, potting mixes are great because they already contain a little percentage of everything you need for your houseplant soil. So we talked about the basic base substrate and this has sphagnum peat moss in it. We talked about amendments for aeration and this already has a little bit of perlite and orchid bark in it. And we talked about nutrients and this already has nutrients in it with the worm castings. So you can see why this is a typically cheaper and easier to store option because with one purchase, you already have at least a little bit of all three components for your houseplant mix. So if you, like I said, if you're gonna splurge, it's better to splurge on this so that you can have quality ingredients already pre-mixed for you. But since this is not absolutely 100% perfect for your houseplants, you do have to add a few other things. This, like I said, is gonna be 60%. And then the next ingredient is going to be perlite. <laughs> I go through a lot of perlite. And if you want to be a little bit, I don't know, fancy, you can definitely get pumice, which is a little bit of a heavier rock, whereas perlite is a little bit lighter, so it will rise to the top of the pot over time. But since this is kind of like the cost-effective houseplant soil method, I'm going to focus on perlite here because it is cheaper than pumice. I'm going to add about 20% perlite to this mix because while there is a tiny bit of perlite in the black gold potting mix or whatever potting mix you're probably using. Um, to make it really adequate for a lot of house plants, um, you definitely want to add more aeration than is sold to you. 60% potting mix, 20% perlite, and then we have another 20% for orchid mix. And I do not say orchid bark because this is not orchid bark, it is an orchid mix. The last 20% of my soil mixture is going to be made up of this mix. Now the reason that I buy orchid mix over just regular orchid bark is honestly pretty similar to why people buy a pre-mixed potting soil and that's because there are multiple beneficial ingredients in one package with one purchase over buying all of these ingredients separately. In this potting mix, there is a little bit of chunky peat, which is, um, you know, peat moss that is like a little bit less broken up. There's fir bark in here, which is kind of like the orchid bark. There is charcoal, which is another thing adding aeration, and there's also a little bit of um, additional perlite. With this one little bag, I have quite a bit of beneficial ingredients, and I just have to mix it in 
with the other two and I'm pretty much set. Now, if you want, you can also add mosquito bits to this Bix as well. I talked about this in my other video, but mosquito bits are a common additive to prevent fungus gnat infestations. You can do this and I have done this a lot in the past, but I honestly just don't want to buy any more mosquito bits. It's a whole other ingredient to consistently purchase in store. So I'm giving it a try, like not adding that to my mix. But if you're someone that likes mosquito bits, go ahead and sprinkle some of that in there as well. And the last big note that I want to say is that this mixture is totally um, customizable to your watering and environment and plants needs. So if you are potting up a plant that loves more moisture, for example, like a fern or calathea, you might want to go a little bit heavier on the potting mix and go with a little bit less amendments. Whereas if you are planting up like a cactus or a succulent or something, you're actually probably gonna wanna decrease that potting mix ratio and go a little bit heavier on the amendments. Okay, so that's gonna be it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this helped kind of explain how you can utilize store-bought soil mixes a little bit better and how you can be a little bit smarter when purchasing that potting mix as well and what you should be looking for. I think that's pretty much it. So thank you all so much for watching. Please drop any tips or questions down below and I will see you in my next video. Bye!